Ion was the son of Creusa, the beauteous daughter of Erechtheus, king of Athens, and the sun-god Phoebus Apollo, to whom she was united without the knowledge of her father. Fearing the anger of Erechtheus, Creusa placed her newborn babe in a little wicker basket, and hanging some golden charms round his neck, invoked for him the protection of the gods, and concealed him in a lonely cave. Apollo, pitying his deserted child, sent Hermes to convey him to Delphi, where he deposited his charge on the steps of the temple. Next morning the Delphic priestess discovered the infant, and was so charmed by his engaging appearance that she adopted him as her own son. The young child was carefully tended and reared by his kind foster-mother, and was brought up in the service of the temple, where he was entrusted with some of the minor duties of the holy edifice. And now to return to Creusa. During a war with the Eubians, in which the latter were signally defeated, Zuthus, son of Aeolus, greatly distinguished himself on the side of the Athenians, and as a reward for his valuable services, the hand of Creusa, the king's daughter, was bestowed upon him in marriage. Their union, however, was not blessed with children, and as this was a source of great grief to both of them, they repaired to Delphi in order to consult the great oracle. The response was that Zuthus should regard the first person who met him on leaving the sanctuary as his son. Now it happened that Ion, the young guardian of the temple, was the first to greet his view, and when Zuthus beheld the beautiful youth he gladly welcomed him as his son, declaring that the gods had sent him to be a blessing and comfort to his old age. Creusa, however, who concluded that the youth was the offspring of a secret marriage on the part of her husband, was filled with suspicion and jealousy. When an old servant, observing her grief, begged her to be comforted, assuring her that the cause of her distress should be speedily removed. When, upon the occasion of the public adoption of his son, Zuthus gave a grand banquet, the old servant of Creusa contrived to mix a strong poison in the wine of the unsuspecting Ion. But the youth, according to the pious custom of the ancients of offering a libation to the gods before partaking of any repast, poured upon the ground a portion of the wine before putting it to his lips, when suddenly, as if by a miracle, a dove flew into the banquet hall and sipped of the wine of the libation, whereupon the poor little creature began to quiver in every limb, and in a few moments expired. Ion's suspicions at once fell upon the obsequious servant of Creusa, who with such officious attention had filled his cup. He violently seized the old man, and accused him of his murderous intentions. Unprepared for this sudden attack, he admitted his guilt, but pointed to the wife of Zuthus as the instigator of the crime. Ion was about to avenge himself upon Creusa, when, by means of the divine intervention of Apollo, his foster-mother, the Delphic priestess, appeared on the scene, and explained the true relationship which existed between Creusa and Ion. In order to set all doubts at rest, she produced the charms which she had found round the neck of the infant, and also the wicker basket in which she had been conveyed to Delphi. Mother and son now became reconciled to each other, and Creusa revealed to Ion the secret of his divine origin. The priestess of Delphi foretold that he would become the father of a great nation, called after him the Ionians, and also that Zuthus and Creusa would have a son called Doris, who would be the progenitor of the Dorian people, both of which predictions were in due time verified. Daedalus and Icarus Daedalus, a descendant of Erechtheus, was an Athenian architect, sculptor, and mechanician. He was the first to introduce the art of sculpture in its higher development, for before his time statues were merely rude representations, having the limbs altogether undefined. But great as was his genius, still greater was his vanity, and he could brook no rival. Now his nephew and pupil, Talus, exhibited great talent, having invented both the saw and the compass, and Daedalus, fearing lest he might overshadow his own fame, secretly killed him by throwing him down from the citadel of Pallas Athene. The murder being discovered, Daedalus was summoned before the court of the Areopagus and condemned to death, but he made his escape to the island of Crete, where he was received by King Minos in a manner worthy of his great reputation. Daedalus constructed for the king the world-renowned labyrinth, which was an immense building, full of intricate passages, intersecting each other in such a manner that even Daedalus himself is said, upon one occasion, to have nearly lost his way in it, 
and it was in this building the king placed the Minotaur, a monster with the head and shoulders of a bull and the body of a man. In the course of time, the great artist became weary of his long exile, more especially as the king, under the guise of friendship, kept him almost a prisoner. He therefore resolved to make his escape, and for this purpose ingeniously contrived wings for himself and his young son Icarus, whom he diligently trained how to use them. Having awaited a favorable opportunity, father and son commenced their flight, and were well on their way when Icarus, pleased with the novel sensation, forgot altogether his father's oft-repeated injunction not to approach too near the sun. The consequence was that the wax, by means of which his wings were attached, melted, and he fell into the sea and was drowned. The body of the unfortunate Icarus was washed up by the tide, and was buried by the bereaved father on an island which he called after his son, Icaria. After this sad event, Daedalus winged his flight to the island of Sicily, where he met with a kind welcome from King Cocalus, for whom he constructed several important public works. But no sooner did Minos receive the intelligence that his great architect had found an asylum with Cocalus than he sailed over to Sicily with a large army and sent messengers to the Sicilian king demanding the surrender of his guest. Cocalus feigned compliance and invited Minos to his palace, where he was treacherously put to death in a warm bath. The body of their king was brought to Agregent by the Cretans, where it was buried with great pomp, and over his tomb a temple to Aphrodite was erected. Daedalus passed the remainder of his life tranquilly in the island of Sicily, where he occupied himself in the construction of various beautiful works of art. End of section 23 Recording by Sarah Williams, Germantown, Maryland, June 2008